thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're about to reveal to us in this service today. Father, we thank you that it's not resting on deaf ears, but it will bring life and light to those, Father, who listen and yield to this word, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you for everything, and we bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all may be seated. As I was uh, preparing myself to come and stand before you all today, you know, um, I just <clears throat> actually just allowed the Lord just to deal with me about some things. So when we start getting into this, one of the things that I've realized that uh, when, when the Lord was dealing with me is that we just, we are literally in a new era. We are in a new space. And um, some of us as believers are having a hard time dealing with this new space we are in. And I'm asking myself, well, I was asking the Lord, why, why is that? The Lord is currying you, but the thing is, are you ready to go in? Are you ready to move forward into that space that, that the Lord uh, wants you uh, to go into? So as <clears throat> I've been as as I was praying, and as I was thinking about this, the Lord uh, revealed to me. He says, "I want you to look at your surroundings." Take a, take a look at your surroundings. What do you see before you? Are you seeing a lot of clutter? Are you seeing a lot of things that is out of place? What, 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 what are you seeing in front of you? So, of course, me and my inquisitive self, I asked the Lord, Lord, what, what are we, you know, what are we talking about? What, where, where are we going with this? And he said, you know... In the word of God, it says, you can't put new wine in old wineskin. So I said, what does this have to do with what, what you're showing me, you see? So as, as I got further and deeper in the prayer, the Lord revealed to me, he said that, what you're looking at on the outside is a reflection of what's going on with you on the inside, your mind. If it's a lot of clutter that's going on around you, hallelujah, then it's impossible for me to feed you new things. I said, ooh. He said, you must deal with the outside clutter, well, let me change that. You must deal with the inside so you can change the outside clutter. So I'm saying, wow. He said, because what's happening is that you will not come to any revelation to bring you out because of the clutter, you see? So I said, all right. So, of course, he took me to Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed, right, to this world, right? But be ye transformed by what? The renewing of the what? The mind. So, your outside, the things that you see outside is a reflection of what's going on inside. So, if you want things to change outside, you got to change Inside, are, are y'all following me? See? So in listening to Apostle talking about prayer, you know, and following Dr. Robert Henderson, you know, uh, based on the course of heaven, and I, I realize, you know, there are stages that we have to go through. The, the problem is, are you ready to go through the stages, the process? Because if you remember the children of Israel got to the promised land, and they didn't get in, right? And this, was, and this is because of the junk that they had in their mind. And now, I need y'all to listen here. See, because of 
what they had been dealing with for so long, they refused to change their mindset so they can be delivered. We, how many times must we go around this circle with God? God is trying to take you from constantly going around this mountain to moving you forth in your promised land. But see, you can't go because you got too much clutter within your mind in order for you to move into this promised land. Now, I, I need you to listen to me here. As I started thinking about this thing, you see, I realized that we are operating under a New Life Christian Center Ministry is operating under an apostolic government, right? The government performs on the revelation of God, you see? Now, now I need you to listen. If it performs on the revelation of God, what that means is that we have to have the mind of Christ. We cannot move on or understand the revelation of God until we operate in the mind. But if the mind is cluttered, if it has too much stuff going on up here, then it's impossible to function properly where you are. You see, it's, it's too, too much, too much going on. Too many bad thoughts, too many things that, that, that is keeping you in that mind. It's just, it's just too much, you see. And then, here it is, the enemy keep bringing people around you to remind you of where you are. Good God Almighty, you aren't supposed to stay where you are, where you are right now, hallelujah, it's just a stepping stone for you to move forward. But, can you move forward? Is, are you setting a clean environment, or are you emptying your bag so God can fill new things in it? Or are you constantly putting more junk on top of the junk that you have right now? The outside, your outside will reflect on what's going on in the inside, you see. Amen. Amen. We got to get rid of some things. Compartmentalize your thoughts, your things. Is it worth me circulating or spending the energy, hallelujah, on this, or is it worth, hallelujah, is it worth my time to focus energy on something that we don't supposed to be? See, because if you're not focusing the energy on moving towards your promised land, then you are wasting your time on that thought. Or in other words, that thought has consumed you in a way that you cannot, cannot receive fresh, receive fresh revelation. I can't talk today for some reason, praise God. I'm, I'm going to get through this thing, you see? Amen. Amen. So in Philippians, let's turn there. Philippians 2. We're going, to, we're going to start at Philippians 2.2. 2. It says, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded. You, you, you see that? Like-minded. Having the same love being of one accord, accord of one mind. You see that? Being a accord of one mind. How can that, how can you do that? That is done through prayer. You see? That is done through, that's, that, that, that is done through seeking God daily, and that's through prayer. Having one mind. Then it says, three, and let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of the mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. So in other words, <clears throat> that means you shouldn't be high-minded of yourself. Right? That means, now, now let, me, let me clarify this right now. When I'm talking about high-minded, 
I'm talking about being in a position. Are you listening? Are, are you listening? Being in a position thinking that you're better than someone else. No. You, make, you can make mistakes just like them. You can fall short just like them. You can, you can, in other words, you can fall just like them. It's not our position to judge or to think better than someone else. That we're better than someone else, you see. Amen. Now, and that's why strife and vainglory and all that other stuff. Four, it says, look not every man to his own things. So in other words, the things that are, good Lord, the things that are around you, that's not, what, that's not what makes you. What you have achieved is not what makes you. What makes you is your prayer life. Good Lord. That's what makes you. What makes you is how you surrender your life for God. That's what makes you. The things that you have accomplished does not make you. God is the one that makes you. You see, so look not on every man to his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. In other words, what other people have doesn't make you either. So you can look on the things you have and look on the things other people have. What is that doing? That is putting uh, uh, junk in your bag. So it's causing you to develop a mindset that can't work off of revelation. Good God of, of mighty. Good God of mighty. So it's stopping the process of God. Oh my gosh. Moving you. See, let me say this. Each and every person that believes in God. Let me put it like this. Each and every person that's here on this earth, God has already had a plan, plan for you. See, each and every one. Now, the thing is, we seek after the plan, not the creator of it. Wow. Now, I'm not knocking anything. Now, I want y'all to listen to me now. I'm not knocking anything or anyone. I'm not saying school isn't important. I'm not saying finding a job isn't important or doing the things that you have to do. But the thing is, how is that defined in your life by God? It's not you defining it. It's him through you. You see? So here it is. Because of us uh, uh, seeking after things, trying to accomplish certain things, what happens? God becomes second thought. Let me let that simmer for a few minutes. God becomes the second thought. He's not the first thought. He's the second thought. So he can show you signs, miracles. He can bring you out of certain things. He can take you certain places. But if your mind isn't right, if your mind has a lot of baggage to it, Right, it's kind of hard to receive what God has or where He wants to take you. Five. It says, "Let this mind be in you, which was also who in Christ Jesus." So, in other words, God said we have to think like Christ, <laughs> because if not, then. The trail or the path that he's trying to take you on, it will not accommodate how you think. But what's at the end of that is going to be, it's going to move you within your prom promised land. Let me say this. How we think about things a lot of times, if God doesn't come first, we're thinking about it wrong. We're thinking about it wrong, you see? And then it says six, who, who being in the form of God, though it's not robbery, robbery 
to be equal with God. You see that? Not rivalry to be equal with God. So your thoughts has to come to the point where they're lining up with who? God. Hallelujah. 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 Now, in saying this, in saying what I just said, when God is shifting, that means that there's something that he needs us to focus on and to pay attention to. Wow. That means that we can't stay stagnant in this place that we are, that we are in, folks. You know, he, he's shifting, he's moving. So as I was praying about this thing, this is something that the Lord brought up to me, and I'm going to read this, and it's based on Robert Henderson, and it says this. This is what the first group of the is Israelites coming out of Egypt never got when they went through the testing. Because their minds was wrong. Their mindset was wrong. They didn't focus on God when they went through the testing. Instead of leading their faith to develop, they rebelled and murmured against God and their God-given leader. God finally had enough. And it shows this in Numbers 14, 22 through 23. Shows God testifying against them. So it gets to a place. Good Lord have mercy. God can only deal with you to a certain point. So what happens? It starts from. It, it moves from God trying to bless you. To when God is placing judgment on you for what you are not doing. This is developed from a mindset that you fail to get rid of. Let me finish reading this. He says, because these men who have seen, listen, who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt, remember what God was doing. Remember the sign. Every day you wake up, it's a sign that God is still waiting and working with you. Yes. <clears throat> I did in Egypt and in the wilderness. And I have put me to the test now these ten times and have not healed, heed my voice, heed to my voice. They certainly shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who reject it see me. This all is developed from your mind. Now listen. Listen. Listen to this. I said anything outside. Everything that you're seeing. Everything that you're doing. Everything is outside. What is it speaking to you? What is it saying to you? What is God saying to you? So when you go, when you step out of your mess, and then you come back into your mess, what are you seeing? Are you accepting it? Or are you working to do something about this? What's going on around you is a reflection of your mindset. You see? And it's stopping you. And it can stop you from seeing the promise God has for you. Because you are so focused on what's around. And I'm going to say this. It's either going to glorify God or not. So if it's, in a, if it's in a place where it's not glorifying God, what you're doing, you are showing things that need to be corrected. Things that need to be uh, put in a proper place. Things that need to change with you, you see? So your outside is a reflection of what's going on in your inside. This is why when people get around you or come near you or whatever the case may be, they can tell what type of mindset you have 
because of what is being reflected on the outside of what's around you. Wow. So if people get in your car as junky, they know your mind's cluttered. People ask you to do something or get something done. And you ain't doing it. They know that you have or you operate in procrastination. And here's the thing. I haven't even got started on my message. All I'm doing right now is basically trying to lay some groundwork for y'all. Because I want y'all to understand, you know, we need to stop trying to deceive ourselves and start working on the inside here. We need to start decluttering our mind and start decluttering and start decluttering our soul because this the clutter that's around you also reveals that your soul is in prison on some things. Now listen, God releases judgment against that would not give get their inheritance. This was because of the faithfulness of God never produced faith in them. So the faithfulness of God, because of your mind being cluttered, your mind being some other place and all this, can never produce, produce the faith in you. Wow. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you here? See, your mind shuts down God's faithfulness. It stops the production of what God wants to do for you because God isn't first. He, he, is, he is an afterthought of what you want to do. Wow. Then experience and receive the grace of God in vain. They experienced and they received the grace of God in vain. When our life is in, in, in such clutter and disarray, God's grace becomes in vain. So in spite of God's faithfulness, their faith never developed. The intentions of God was to lead them through the wilderness, show them his glory in every adverse situation. They never faced and allowed it to develop faith in them because they are so busy and so consumed about them and only them. So then this brings me to the point. A point. How do we look at the cross? How do we look at the blood of Jesus? Jesus died for our sins. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Jesus died and he, he, he rose up. The, the, the blood of Christ was there to redeem us. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's there and it's available for us. We have seen in our lives God's hand have touched our lives some way, somehow, some fashion. <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have seen some miracles of God. Right? We have seen God's faithfulness in our lives, but yet our life is reflecting that God doesn't even exist in certain areas. That is shown by what is going on around you. Now I tell you, I tell you this ministry is an apostolic ministry, you see. We're flowing in the apostolic. So what that means is that God is revealing, uh, revealing to us uh, ways and changing our understanding, the way we look at things. But I realize I can stand up here and preach till I'm green in my face. But if your mind is clogged with your personal things, we can't go no further. We can't go no. We can't go no further. We can't do nothing until we get that mind unclogged. So I can speak revelation, things to you. I can bring things up. You can sit here and glorify and, and, and jump for joy and howl right now, but when you go home, you lose it because you're going back in the same thing that reminds you that you haven't gone anywhere. That it kept you stuck is because you haven't set the space or the environment that you need for God to function. 
What you see around you is a reflection of your what? Mind. So now, one scripture says, let me see if I can find it real, real quick. Luke 9, 23. Let's look at that real quick. Hallelujah. Every time you miss church, every time you step away from the word, every time you do, you have lost the, the, you have lost the ability to move you or to change how you're thinking about some things. It just moves you away from it. Let's see. Luke, are we there? Luke 9.23. He says, and he said unto them who? All. Mm-hmm. If any man will come after me, what did he say? If any man will what? Will come after who? Him. He didn't say you. He said who? Him. Then he says, let him what? Deny what? Himself. Your life and the things that's going on around you is telling you who are you seeking. Good God Almighty. It's telling you who you're seeking, folks. Sons and daughters of God, it's telling you who you're seeking. Your life outside is reflecting of who you're denying. Good Lord. Either you're denying God or you are denying yourself. Who are you denying? Then it says, let him deny himself and take up his cross, what? Daily. And what? Follow what? Me. Now, I didn't say this. Jesus said this. You know, this is a result of your mind. This is a result of how you live. This is a reflection. Now, you have people, you have people that's trying to pull you down on that level. I got to deal with this. Even though, now I want y'all to hear me, even though you may think they celebrating you. They really not celebrating you is because they not encouraging you to move forward. Whenever God puts someone in your life, or you are listening, four things should take place. Increase, gain, benefit, and reward. Yes. Right? These are the four things that need to take place when God puts some, someone in your life. This is what takes place. Why? Because God is the author and the finisher of this. You see? Increase, gain, benefit, and reward. So now, when this person comes into your life, it doesn't mean that it's about you. Good Lord. It means about, it, it, what, it, what it's saying is, how is God uh, manifesting those four things out of your life? Yes. It's about God being manifest. Is God increasing? Is God a gaining? Is he benefiting? And is he, is he rewarding from you, from that person getting in your life? Could Lord have mercy, y'all, that, that went over y'all head. Y'all yes. not hearing me here. This is why. Y'all need to constantly pray in the spirit, you see. Because one thing that you know, the heart truly is going to be revealed. You have people that might be in your face smiling. Oh, you this, you that, you this. The world said be careful of those who highly speak of you all the time. And I'm going to tell you, they're the very people that's going to give you help. You see, they're the very people. That's going to try to stop you from producing. Why? It's because they want, they have selfish motives. Hallelujah. And it's not to make sure you move forward the way God wants you to move. But because you don't pray, you don't seek God. What's happening? It's constantly clogging your bag. It's constantly stopping the flow that God wants to, wants to flow things through you. Instead of you becoming someone that releases blessing, you, you become one that consumes. 